Hey everyone, George here. So, ever wonder how the rich get, well, rich, and can afford Starbucks every single day while eating avocado toast for breakfast at the same time? Well then, let's talk. Business Insider interviewed 233 wealthy individuals, all at least making $160,000 or more, and all worth at least $3.2 million in assets. And here's what they found. Number one on our list are the suits. The guys in the suits making all the money. The CEOs, the COOs, the CFOs, the CTOs, the COO, anything with a C basically, or an executive of a company. These individuals made around 18% of the wealthy individuals interviewed. This type of wealth generally takes a lot of devotion to a single company at the beginning, mainly because at the start of your career, you're pretty low on the totem pole, so you really have to work your way up. With potential risks being not ever getting promoted or being fired, worst case scenario. You're fired. You're fired. The other struggle in this avenue is your income is strictly reliant to where you work. If the company's not doing well, you're not getting paid well. If the company doesn't make a lot of money, you can't expect to make a lot of money. Most wealthy executives generally work for, you know, wealthy companies that are making a lot of money that can afford those big salaries that can afford those potential stock payouts and remember this field is extremely competitive years of schooling networking and being at the right place at the right time and from what i've witnessed executives get changed like pairs of socks all of the time next up on our list we have virtuosos AK, the really really smart guy virtuosos made up around seven percent of the wealthy interviewed and when I think of this line of work, I generally think of something like an SAT prepper. You know, the ones you pay thousands upon thousands of dollars to train your kid to get into a school that you're going to pay thousands of thousands of more dollars to go to. Very good investment. These people generally work for wealthier individuals who can afford to pay more for their services. There's also practical virtuosos, someone like Gary Vee, who's really good at marketing and promoting content. You would go to Gary Vee if you wanted your company, for instance, to get more notoriety, to become more hip, to go mainstream. And Gary Vee is that example of somebody who's really, really good in his niche. And I can guarantee you he charges a pretty penny for it. In general, virtuosos usually stay in one niche. You're not going to see an SAT prepper coaching college kids on how to get into the NFL. Or maybe they do. What was that guy's name? Rick Singer? He was coaching kids on how to get into colleges in a basketball track suit with a sketchy haircut. I, I, I don't really understand why anybody trusted this guy. Now for the more relatable field, the entrepreneurial route that apparently everybody on Instagram likes putting hashtag entrepreneur in their bio. It's not called living with your parents if you pay them rent. Entrepreneurs made a whopping 51% of the people interviewed. I would say this is the broadest of all categories because all an entrepreneur is, is creating something yourself that provides value that people are willing to pay for. But at the same time, with it being the most accessible field, it's also one of the most difficult fields. Try creating something out of nothing and having people pay for that. Nobody's gonna pay for something if it's already around. You have to be better. You have to provide something more than the guy next door is providing. But if you're really passionate about what you're doing and you put in the time and effort, eventually it'll start to pick up and be successful to some extent. Well, most of the time, 27% of entrepreneurs said their first business completely failed. But with most failures comes some type of learning experience. And I can personally attest to this. In my first business, I really thought I did everything perfect. I had the best logo, great website. I thought I had a cool catchphrase. And at the end of the day, I had no clients, no income, and it just failed. But when I went back to the same model that I did previously that failed, I really took a deeper look in what I could have improved, what I could have done better. And redoing the same business the second time was exponentially easier because I already knew what not to do, what failed the last time, what I deemed perfect. Because as an entrepreneur, you're always learning and growing. The only bad part is it did cost money, which is kind of hard to come around when you're first starting something that doesn't make money. So that's why a lot of entrepreneurs don't start it full time unless they have a side job that is really paying all their bills and they can focus mainly on their new 
passion that they're trying to create. But what about the average Joe? What can they do to achieve wealth and riches? Well, I'm sure most of you are already doing this one, and it's just called saving and investing. If you can save 20% of your income or more and invest it consistently, by the time you retire in 32 years, you can have upwards of $3 million saved. So let's say a couple is netting $100,000 between themselves. They invest $20,000 a year into, let's say, the S&P. Over an average of five to eight years, that will double. So after 32 years, you can really see how much money will be accumulated. The hardest part about this method is saving and investing. Most people don't want to save their money or invest it. And when they do invest it, they take it out when they don't need to. I know me personally, there are so many times I want to take out the money I've invested just because I made a small profit and it'll feel good to take that in. But I'm paying short-term capital gains sometimes and I'm just gonna reinvest that money anyway. So why would I take it out? Because at some point you're gonna retire, right? And you want that money. But at the same time, when you retire, that money's probably gonna be put back into some type of bond or safe index fund or dividend portfolio that will last you until you die. Which at that point, you'll probably still keep at the market so you can indefinitely retire on your money. Just like when you indefinitely retire that like button when you hit it. Now, some fun facts about the wealthy people interviewed. 13% were in sales, 28% worked for lucrative companies, 63% took some type of financial risk, and I can attest to this because I took financial risk when I started my company, 68% had a college degree, and 86% worked more than 50 hours a week. This is a big misconception. When you're gonna work for yourself, you're definitely not working less than a regular nine to five. You're working 50 plus hours, and that's just the time you're working. You're still thinking when you go home, you're sending emails, you're searching for new ideas. You're basically always working as an entrepreneur and that's a big thing people overlook. So don't think you're gonna be working less if you start your own business. You're gonna be working much, much more and generally making much, much less in the short term, which is a big eye opener for a lot of entrepreneurs, especially new ones, because they generally think it's gonna be so easy and it's really, really hard and scary when you first start. So what do you guys think about these ways to get rich? Have you guys used any of these? Are any of you entrepreneurs or big CEOs? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time.